a statement and this statement is directed to the government of Kenya specifically to the president of this nation. So I'll just let my interpreter to just allow me to do it in English so that I can conclude. As I conclude, I want to send a message to the president of this nation, Honorable His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta Muigai. And I'm doing this via social media because in Kenya, there is no way you can reach your president even though you, the voter, are his employee, employer, uh, which I believe should not be the case because we need to reach our leaders and tell them what we are going through. Uh, Mr. President, a time has come for the citizens and the leaders of this nation of Kenya where they need to know that the president, the senators, the governors, the members of parliament, the cabinet secretaries, and all elected leaders are public servants and they ought to know that they are there to serve the citizens and to listen to them and that is why we elect them every five years and that's why they are also called civil servants they are not lords they are servants i bring this up because of the lockdown and the curfew that has been imposed by you mr president last friday your excellency the people of this country have suffered a lot since this pandemic came to this nation last year. Many have lost their jobs, businesses, livelihoods, matrimonial, matrimonial homes, and some of them are living in hopelessness. I've just mentioned a lady who wrote me on Facebook yesterday, and she told me my name is Jane Mwehaki, and I've reached the end when the president declared that People cannot come to my small kiosk to eat. Uh, it meant that I've lost my livelihood. And she was telling me I want to commit suicide. I have no hope. I have a child and I'm pregnant already. And my husband, because of the hardships of last year, she, he has abandoned me. Such is what is happening in this nation, Mr. President. Last year, when this pandemic started, we joined with you and endured the lockdown for more than four months because we wanted to fight this virus and eliminate it. We endured our, our job losses, businesses were closed, our livelihoods were taken away from us in the hope that everything would go back to normal. But as soon as the curve started to flatten, we thought our lives will resume back to normal. Then you, Mr. President, and your brother, Raila, restarted the BBI reggae. And you started, together with your followers, to crisscross the country in utter disregard to the laid down corona protocols which your government had put in place. And then when your former brother, William Ruto, saw this, he also resumed his 2022 presidential campaigns, also disregarding the protocols that were put in place. Mr. President, let, it put me, let me put it to you plainly. It is this careless action by you, the politicians, that has made the rallies to become the super spreaders of this virus. And this can be confirmed by the number of politicians that have contracted the virus such as Honor Raila and others who have even succumbed to it and died. Mr. President, you and your fellow politicians are to blame for this devastating third wave. And the back stops with you. Unfortunately, it is we, the common Mwananchi, who have to carry the brunt and suffer the consequences because of what you and your fellow politicians have done. And we do this while you continue living your lavish lifestyles, thanks to the taxes we continue to pay even as we lose our source of income. Coming down to the lockdown you declared on Friday, I was surprised that besides declaring the lockdown of these five counties, you should have also come up with a plan on how to bring down or totally eradicate the virus in these five counties. I expected that you would initiate it 
You would initiate a massive testing and vaccination program that would reach all the inhabitants of these five counties so that after these counties are opened up, everyone who have, would have been vaccinated and even would have known their status. Mr. President, you cannot eradicate this virus through lockdowns and curfews. You can delay its spread, but once these counties are opened, we'll find ourselves in the same scenario and ordering for more curfews, maybe extending them even up to mid midday and more lockdowns. A massive campaign for testing and vaccination is what will bring us back to a normal life. Finally, Mr. President, I feel I need to tell you something that has really hurt me and has hurt many religious leaders, and that is the way you've treated the church. Last year, when your cabinet secretary, Mr. Mutai Kagwe, was announcing the closure of churches, he insulted the leaders of these churches while leaving the bars open, which later became the super spreaders. Since the churches were reopened, we have been religiously, we have, we have religiously followed the protocols as directed by the Interfaith Council for National Response to Coronavirus Pandemic. As a result, we don't have cases of transmission traced back to churches. We, as religious leaders, were surprised to hear that churches have been lumped together with bars and they have been closed. Mr. President, I believe this is a show of lack of respect for the churches and even more, contempt for the same. How can you compare churches with bars? I wish you could have said the churches increase the social distance from 1.5 meters to 5 meters and only admit people who fit within that. On top of that, you have allowed matatus to operate as normal. The question I'm asking myself, and I believe many people are asking themselves, between a matatu and a church, where would you feel safe as far as social distance and hygiene is concerned? Mm -hmm. Again, public markets, which are also super spreaders, are still operating as normal in total disregard to the protocols. You go to Marikiti Market in the morning, no social distance, no mass. Go to Kongoya Mom, uh, Market in Mombasa. Come here at Gedorai Market. No protocols. And yet, you close the churches. Churches that are praying for this nation. Churches that are a hope for many in this nation. Mr. President, I feel you have a problem with the church and a personal one. And it is not good for our country. The church can become a very good ally, ally for you in this fight against corona. When IEBC wanted to register voters, they came to our compounds and we welcomed them. They would come every morning and we will tell our congregation, if, if you've not registered, go and register as a voter. When polio campaigns are started, the community health workers, they come to our churches and we announced to the members that next Sunday, they will be coming to our compound to vaccinate our children. And that's why the polio campaigns are very successful. Mr. President, don't you think if you do the same with the COVID vaccination and testing, you would yield the same results? The church can become your ally or your enemy. The choice is yours. But as things stand now, you have treated the church with contempt and made the church to look like your enemy. Remember, when people are losing their jobs and businesses and livelihoods, they run to the churches which you have closed for prayers, counsel, and help. Now that people are losing all that, where will they go? I've just shared with you about Jane Mohaki, who has lost her, her business. She called me. I had to help her with some little money. And there are many like that. A, a friend of mine called me from town yesterday. And he told me, Pastor, if you have a hundred shillings, could you send it to me because I don't have bus fare? He has a small repair phone shop along Luthuli Avenue. And he told me, Pastor, you can't believe it. There is nothing I've done the whole day. 
We usually expect that by five when people are leaving work, they will pass by our shops and we do, get, do some little business as we are making their phones. But now when they leave their shops because of the curfew, which has been brought lower to 8 a.m., 8 p.m., they run to the bus stop to get their matatus. And he told me, Pastor, if you're able to give me 500, I'll appreciate because I don't have food in my family. Mr. President, your citizens are suffering and they cannot talk to you the way they are talking to me. The church is their only hope. So I pray you will reconsider what you've done to the church. Know that the church can help fight this pandemic. Um, I want to congratulate you for putting the interfaith uh, council they have been doing a good job, but you've taken their job from them. Let them do what they know how to do. You are, you are not an expert in church matters. Let them do their job and open the churches, even if it means increasing the social distance. And I want to assure you, when you come to my church in Pefa Kahawa West, you will find that we have obeyed all the protocols. We have a temperature measurement gun. We have Install points of uh, uh, sanitation, sanitizers on the wall. We are keeping the social distance. And for your information, your excellency, some of our members are doctors and nurses who are the front line of fighting this virus in the hospitals where you've employed them. Do you think they can come to a church where is, which is breaking the protocols? Please, Mr. President, don't listen to people who don't fear God. Who keep inciting you against the church? Open the churches and let the church help you in the fight against this pandemic. And once again, put in place a plan of making sure when the counties are open, the five counties, we have, will have eradicated the virus from this county. And the plan is very simple. Mobilize the vaccines. Mobilize testing kits and begin vaccinating the inhabitants of these five counties. You will thank me for taking that advice. God bless you. I will pray for you, even though I'm very angry with you, Mr. President. But I love you by the love, with the love of Jesus. God bless you so much.